Shalom, shalom. <coughs> shalom. Rock the Yahweh. Rock the Yahweh shine. Rock the Yahweh. Rock the Yahweh shine. Call her lame la. Yahweh. Bahashem Yahweh shine. Bahashem. Or call Kadash. All praises be to the Most High. Yahweh. In the name of his son and our Lord Savior, Yahweh Shai. <coughs> Much respect and honor to the brothers that are doing the work in truth and sincerity, risking their lives and freedom to do so, pushing this gospel throughout the four corners of the earth. Salutations to the hopeful elect that are scattered abroad. Double honor and respect to the apostles and elders of the great millstone. <coughs> Coming back at you with another lesson. Listen to the sincere teachers. Listen to the sincere teachers. So something should trigger in our mind when we see a bunch of men gathered together on the street corner in 20 degree weather, 10 degree weather, 30 degree weather. <clears throat> Something should be triggered in our mind that alerts us to the fact that this is not a normal common occurrence. I mean, going back about 30 years ago, you would see Jake on the street corner up to no good. You know, smoking it up or hustling and dealing. So this is a pivotal time that we're living in. Very crucial. And only the elect is going to be able to grab hold of this rod and be pulled out of the fire. <laughs> Let's read this one. Shalom, beloved brother. Hebrews 4 and 12, 1 Corinthians 1 and 21. <clears throat> For after that, in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. Perfect segue. There was a woman came on Elder Yashawamba's page saying we're going to be saved by regular seafaring ships. She actually said we're going to be saved by seafaring ships. Unbelievable. <clears throat> so this is a spiritual message and it takes a spiritual mind to be able to comprehend the Lord's notes, if you will. It's just like if you're in a prison, only the prisoners can be able to de decipher the notes, the prison talk. Shalom, beloved, malak. Yahweh, b'ashim, yahweh, shayah, barakatai. B'ashim, barakatai. So yeah, this woman said to Elder Ashawamba, no, these are not chariots of the Lord, they're sea ships. 
that's going to save us. We're going to show you today, using the Bible, that the two-thirds don't read what these ships are. <clears throat> Let's go here. <clears throat> Luke 21 and 28. The book of Luke, chapter 21, verse 27. And then shall they see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. So when we read Psalms 104, these clouds are the so-called UFOs. They fly. So how in the hell are we looking at the ocean side? A lot of you two-thirds, you're getting ready to be erased from the annals of history. We're tired of you. Let's read that again. <clears throat> and then shall they see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. And then, no, let's go to verse 28. And when these things begin to come to pass, then look up. No, we're going to just look at the sunset on the ocean or the seashore. So this doctrine is not for the spiritually impaired. <laughs> okay? I'm just telling you. This is ridiculous. Let's read that again. <clears throat> Somebody post Isaiah, not Isaiah, 2 Ezra 16 and 12, and then we need Jeremiah 51 and 42. <clears throat> Luke 21, verse 28. And when these things begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your heads, for your redemption draweth nigh. So this is why the Bible says in Isaiah 31, as birds flying, so shall the Lord defend the inhabitants of Jerusalem. That's an aerial assault, an aerial attack coming. Why you think they stood up a space force, bug outs? Are they looking at the goddamn sea if they stood up a space force? I get irritated with stupidity. Y'all got to forgive me. I hate stupidity. Let's go here. So when these missiles hit, the only safe place is going to be <coughs> is going to be in a, a multi-million dollar bunker underground or in the outer firmament. So the chariots of the Lord is going to save his elect. There's going to be tsunamis on the, on the ground. The seashore is going to over take the ground. So there's going to be a mixture of fire, water, and tempest. That's why the Bible says, look up for your redemption draw of night. Right here. Brother GMS Spiritual Art 144. Isaiah 31 and 5. As birds flying, so will the Lord of hosts defend Jerusalem. Defending also he will deliver it, and passing over, he will preserve it. So this is going to be an aerial assault by the chariots of the Lord. He's going to save his elect. That's that Jerusalem. It's a buzzword for the lively stones. Same brother, spiritual art. <laughs> Revelation 11 and 12. And they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, Come up hither. And they ascended up to heaven in a cloud, and their enemies beheld them. So these are catchphrases or catechisms for the Lord's elect. Now the wicked global elite like Elon Musk, Mark Zuckerberg, sound like them. Jelly preserves. 
So these wicked elite are going to be salvaged to go into slavery. Now I want to get back on these tsunamis. <clears throat> the ground is going to be a death trap. You're going to either drown or burn to death. It's going to be hot lava with tsunamis coming ashore. See, watch this. <clears throat> Jeremiah 51. And let's go here first. Second Ezra 16 and 12. The earth quaketh and the foundations thereof. The sea ariseth up with waves from the deep, and the waves of it are troubled, and the fish thereof also. So the water is from the impacts of these nuclear missiles. It's going to create a man-made tsunami mixed with an earthquake and hot lava. And you want to be on a ship. Damn, boy, stupidity just... Um, that's why we, um, Mike, Michael said, I will bear the indignation of the Lord. That's dealing with simps and sheebies wearing blankets on their head. Talking about they just got their hair done. Bug out. Let's go here to uh, <clears throat> Jeremiah 51. <coughs> I think it's 42. So the, the sea is going to be troubled from the impacts of these nuclear missiles. Jeremiah 51 and 42. See? The sea is come up upon Babylon. She is covered with the multitude of the waves thereof. See? Man-made tsunamis. This is massive destruction. You don't want to be on no damn boat or ship other than the aerial extraction being taken up. And when the Lord says, come up hither, the ancient Paleo-Hebrew tongue, come up hither, up. Look up for your redemption draweth nigh. In Luke 21, verse 27 and 28. But bug outs are coming out of the woodworks. Jeremiah 51, verse 42. The sea is come up upon Babylon. She is covered with the multitude of the waves thereof. Her cities are a desolation, a dry land, and a wilderness, a land wherein no man dwelleth, neither doth any son of man pass thereby. So the cities are going to be melted with hot fire. Let's go here. The brother Gabar Ayash. Isaiah 24 and 19, the earth is utterly broken down. The earth is clean dissolved. The earth is moved exceedingly. So that's going to create earthquakes and tsunamis. And then you got what's going to appear to be a tornado mixed with fire called a tempest. Death in every a 360 degree spear of death from above, from the ground, from the sea, air, land, and sea, death. This is a major aerial and land assault by the spirit of the Lord. Let's follow Eve and look for the love boat or carnival cruise line. All the two-thirds are going to be burned on this side. They're going to be fuel for the fire. No more bug outs. Heckle and Jekyll. You see? <clears throat> Simon and Theodore. Through. <clears throat> Alvin. Bug outs. Let's go to Habakkuk 3 and 8. <clears throat> Habakkuk 3, verse 8. Let's go to seven. I saw the tents of Cushan in affliction and the curtains of the land of Midian did tremble. 
<coughs> you don't want to be in the Holy Land area or in Havre Shaphat in this during this time either. That's why the Lord is causing these nations to be gathered around the so-called Middle East, which is a made-up term, made up in around 1850. So the Lord is gathering these nations around that area called Yahweh Shaphat in the Holy Land area. That's going to be lit on fire and glow in the dark. Habakkuk 3, verse 8, was the Lord displeased against the rivers, was thine anger against the rivers, was thy wrath against the sea, that thou didst ride upon thine horses and thy chariots of salvation. So the new Passover, the Lord will defend Jerusalem as birds flying. He will pass over them which is Yahweh Shai coming back with the hosts of heaven, armies. So the skies are going to be filled with what's going to appear to be birds flying, which are the chariots of the Lord, the so-called UFOs. So you don't want to be on the seas or the waters. They're going to be troubled, <coughs> crashing against the landmass, overflowing the landmass, which is going to cook itself into a dry wilderness or wasteland and become a desert. Many two to two thirds, they don't read. That's why it's irritating hearing them talk. It's irritating listening to them talk. Habakkuk 3 and 8 was the Lord displeased against the rivers was thine anger against the rivers? Was thy wrath against the sea? That thou didst ride upon thine horses and thy chariots of salvation. This is deliverance being saved. Yep, Brother Gabar Ayash. Revelation 15 and 2. And I saw, as it were, a sea of glass mingled with fire. See? So the waters are going to be contaminated with wormwood, which is radiation. And there's going to be fire on some of these waters from the massive destruction mixed with tsunamis, earthquakes, hot lava burning within the waters and on land. See? <laughs> So to try to say, downplay the scriptures and say we're just going to get on regular ships, you do error not knowing the scriptures at all. Let's read that again. <clears throat> My voice is drying out bad. Revelation 15 and 2. And I saw, as it were, a sea of glass. So the elect is going to be observing the destruction from a safe chamber or the Cadillacs of the sky, <laughs> the chariots of the Lord. <laughs> See, that's going to be the safe place. Enter thou into thy chambers and shut thy doors about thee, round about. Revelation 15 and 2. And I saw, as it were, a sea of glass mingled with fire and them that had gotten the victory over the beast and over his image and over his mark and over the number of his name stand on the sea of glass having the harps of God. So the elect is going to be hovering outside of the firmament able to view the destruction on earth in the outer firmament. <laughs> that's going to be the safe place not on no damn boat I almost said something but I had to catch myself Isaiah 26 and 20 come my people 
enter thou into thy chambers and shut thy doors about thee. Hide thyself, as it were, for a little moment until the indignation be overpassed. So when you look at, there was a beautiful lesson GMS Birmingham did. And they showed the safe altitudes from the destruction to stand clear of being destroyed of a nuclear blast. The blast was as tall as Mount Everest, the second and third order effects of that blast reached up as high as Mount Everest on these new missiles. So the safe place is going to be in the chariots of the Lord, the so-called UFOs. Even the fallout is going to reach extremely high. There's going to be radiation in the water, burning lava seeping into the waters. The ground is going to be broken up. Earthquakes. This is massive devastation and death. A 360 degree sphere of death. Massive. Habakkuk saw it. So did Ezra. Yep. Brother Gabar Ayash. Psalms 27 and 5. For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me up upon a rock. So Yahweh Shai is coming back on that fathership. Ezra saw this, and it looked like a large mountain. I believe it was 2 Ezra 13 and 8. So everything is from an aerial view. Luke 21, 27, and 28. Look up. For thy redemption draweth nigh. Not looking for a carnival cruise line. Okay? Maggie from the Simpsons. Bug out. Through. Yep. Isaiah 66 and 15. For behold, the Lord will come with fire and with his chariots like a whirlwind to render his anger with fury and his rebuke with flames of fire. Whenever you look at an invasion by a military, it starts off with long-range missiles and then an aerial assault or air threat, air force. So the Lord is a man of war. You don't think he knows how to launch an attack? air, ground, and sea assault. Yes, he does. They showed this in the movie War of the Worlds. <laughs> yep. Brother Bunyan Yashawala. For by <coughs> Brother Bunyan Yashawala, Isaiah 66 and 16. For by fire and by his sword will the Lord plead with all flesh, and the slain of the Lord shall be many. Beautiful. So there's going to be death all around us. Bodies floating in the water. Bodies on the ground, falling in the cracks of the ground. Falling in holes and pits. Man-made dugouts from the massive blow of these nuclear missiles. Burning bodies everywhere. Burning flesh. So death is going to be commonplace. Dead bodies floating around. With also not intact, by the way. All right? We got to think warfare. An arm over there. There's a head right there. That looked like a member of the IUIC. There's another leg way over here. How did his leg get a mile away from his damn arm? How do we find his torso floating over in China? So this thing is going to be massive. There's a bug out right there. How did his kneecap 
get separated from his Nike Air Jordans. Through. <laughs> Let's get ready to close out. Psalms 91 and 1. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Somebody post Amos 3 and 7. Amos 3 and 7. So, you gotta, there takes a heavy spirit to be able to interpret a spiritual note from the Heavenly Father. What secret place? Under the doctrine of the mysteries spoken of by the men of the Lord. Not making some shit up. Talking about we're going to take a shit somewhere. The Lord keeps me from really saying what I want to say right now. Brother Hebrews 4 and 12. <clears throat> Amos 3 and 7. Surely the Lord will do nothing, but he revealeth his secret unto his servants, the prophets. So we're hiding under the doctrinal book or scrolls of the men of the Lord, the tabernacle of David. Let's go back to Psalms 91 and 1. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. So the doctrine provides a hedge, a safe place, which is going to manifest into being delivered up. They ascended up into a cloud, the chariots of the Lord. So it is a step-by-step -step phase developmental process. To, to deliverance and salvation. So it's ultimately going to culminate or end in being taken up into the secret chambers of the Lord and be changed, new bodies, which is starting a what? A change now. We're being born again, a spiritual baptism to be able to understand this doctrine. See? So the change has already started if you're not a bug out. If you can understand the doctrine, which is going to fully mature into a new vessel, a new body, a new creature to be able to dwell in the secret chambers of the Heavenly Father. Wow. See? Psalms 91 and 2. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. These nuclear missiles are going to create a plague of fire. It's noisome and it's a plague of fire. He shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wings shall thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. So when the enemy come in like a flood to mandate digital slavery, digital shackles, a digital grid house arrest, when this nigga come in like that, the spirit of the Lord is going to cause fire to rain down on this animal. And the remnant is going to be preserved, taken up into the chariots of the Almighty, the Cadillacs of the sky. Chaos is going to break out here because the citizens of Babylon, spiritual Sodom and Egypt, no longer trust their government. Texas is fighting against the federal government to keep Constantina and barbed wire in place and to keep the border fortified and secure. While the federal government keeps trying to remove that and Facilitate a porous borderline, an open border. So Texas is showing signs of rebellion, succession, or rebelling against the political, military, and economic establishment. <coughs> they shall not regard their kings nor their princes. Is that not prophesied? Yes. 
Psalms 3 and 7. Arise, O Lord, save me, O my God, for thou hast smitten all mine enemies upon the cheekbone. Thou hast broken the teeth of the ungodly. So they're going to come in modern times as well with their militaries. The teeth of the dragon is his military. That's where his strength lies. So Yahweh Shai is going to knock out his teeth, cripple this man, and render him combat ineffective and take up his elect into the chariots of the Lord. The tabernacle of David, once changed, is going to descend onto the nations and take them down with Yahweh Shai. And assistance from the angels of the Lord, the so-called UFOs, a ground assault of the house of David being assisted by the chariots of fire led by Yahweh Shai. Psalms 3 and 8. Salvation belongeth unto the Lord. Thy blessing is upon thy people. So the blessing comes with inheriting lands and slaves. To be blessed means to have employees, which translates into slaves. That's blessing. And by default, take their lands. Not only the holy lands, but all the lands of the heathen. So they're going to lose their lands, wives, children, and they're going to be put into hardcore slavery. So these nations are going to fight tooth and nail to preserve what they have. But prevailed not. The dragon and his angels fought against Michael and his angels and prevailed not. So the saints of the Most High is going to take the kingdom. pretty much it. Yep. Yeah, we got to get this one. 1 Corinthians 15 and 25. Let's go to 23. With every, oh, we got to go up to 22. For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. So we all die in Adam, in the flesh, but are going to be resurrected to immortal, eternal life through the same spirit, different body, Yahweh Shai. He is the Alpha or the First and the Omega, the End. For as in Adam all die, even so in Hamashiach shall all be made alive. But every man in his own order, Hamashiach, the first fruits, afterward, they that are Hamashiachs at his coming. King David is going to be on the scene. The 12 apostles, followed by the 144,000, followed by the remnant. The order of their antiquity or their age, the first spirits created, or the lesser lights after Yahweh Shai. They're also the ancient spirits or the ancient men, nobles. First Corinthians 15 and 24. Then cometh the end when he shall have del delivered up the kingdom to God, even the Father, when he shall have put down all rule and authority and all power. So Edom must come down. The spiritual walls of Jericho, Babylon, Egypt must be judged. <laughs> and these cohort of nations under them, pursuant to Isaiah 34, they're in bed with the beast. They're going to be judged and put into slavery. All nations are, pursuant to Jeremiah 30 and 16. 1 
1 Corinthians 15 and 24. Then cometh the end when he shall have delivered up the kingdom to God, even the Father, when he shall have put down all rule and all authority and power. That's the house of David. What has been will be again, and there is no new thing under the sun. All nations were subject underneath the Davidic dynasty. That's coming back. The restoration of Israel. For he must reign till he have put all enemies under his feet. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. So the elect are going to be renewed and re-emerge as immortals, eternal immortals. Death is going to be swallowed up in victory, literally, and the great red dragon is going to be put down. He is as death and cannot be satisfied, but heapeth unto him all nations, and death and hell follows this red beast, this animal. I'll go ahead and end it there. Yep. See? Right here. Brother Gabar Ayash. Revelation 12 and 7. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels. So you have the international global elite with a United Nations military under them. They're led by the head, Rome, Edom, the European Union, and NATO. America's going to get hit first. The great whore is going to be knocked off first, followed by the rest of the composition of this great red dragon. Michael, Mayaka Allah, who is like the Most High, and his angels, the chariots of the Lord, and the ground force, the mighty men of the battle acts of the tabernacle of David, fighting against the militaries, the armies of the heathen under Rome, the EU and NATO, Revelation 12 and 8, and prevailed not, neither was their place found any more in heaven. Rulership. So they're going to be knocked down off the high horse. The king of the hill is going to be brought low. Verse 9, Revelation 12 and 9. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. So they're going to be brought into slavery <coughs> and go from rags. They're going to go from riches to rags instantaneously in one hour, one day. They're going to go from riches to rags, peasants, slaves. Some of them are going to be bound. Some of them are going to be in chains. That's 2 Ezra 13. That's right. Get to work. Starting with you little bitty Tic Tac hats. Get to work and take that damn silly hat off that you outgrew 30 years ago. All nonsense is going to be put down. Masculine she beasts wearing blankets over their head talking about they just got their hair done. Bugged out and weak effeminate men with no backbone. Your time is up. All right. We got a little more longer to deal with your nonsense. This is ridiculous, what we're dealing with on this damn earth. And cavemen ruling over us. So hell from beneath is going to be moved to meet this man at his fall. Brother Hebrews 4 and 12. Leviticus 25 and 44. <laughs> Both thy bond men and thy bond maids, which thou shalt have, shall be of the heathen that are round about you. Of them shall ye buy bond men and bond maids. That's Jeremiah 30 and 16. 
all they that devour it, they shall be devoured. The caveman is not going to get a pass. Neither the cohort of nations or his confederation, his league of nations that are in bed with him. All they that devour these shall be devoured. Them and their sons and daughters. And by default, they're going to lose their lands, their possessions. All right. I'll have to end it there. So it's best to listen to the men of the Lord standing out in 10 degree weather, 20 degree weather. And you sitting home drinking some damn hot tea with lemon and honey. Talking about, no, that ain't right. What the Bible really means, shut your ass up. Okay? If not, come out here with us and stand on the battle line. Or shut your ass up with your damn hot tea. This is ridiculous. And then you got women even telling us what we're teaching is wrong. That's all wrong. That's not what the Bible meant. A woman is going to be a lady again, by the way. No more she beasts. MMA wrestlers and NFL linebackers telling us what we need to be teaching. You NFL linebackers, she beasts, are going to be putting on dresses in the kingdom. All right? And being quiet and loving again. Tender and delicate. Not cock diesel and kicking the man's ass and drawing three or four government checks. That's coming to an end with these dysfunctional, badass kids growing up. Running a muck in the streets out here. They need their ass kicked. But you done kicked the man's ass out of the house to get government assistance. All the bullshit on this earth is going to be a thing of the past. Okay? This is ridiculous. What did the brother say? Yeah, Khan, order will be established. Eating the bag of red Doritos. Exactly. But yet they got the right doctrine. The rest of us are wrong that are freezing our ass off out here every weekend. <coughs> Unbelievable. Anyway, hopefully this lesson has been edifying. Tabernacle of David is being raised up from the graves and from the ashes and the dust of confusion. We got next, Lord willing, Palm Yashorella and the Bob the Bob, Barack of Thumb, which means bless you all. In the name of Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, by Hashem, Kadash. See you on the next lesson, Lord willing. Shalom. Peace be unto you. Shalom. Yeah, this kingdom is vexing. Every day, I'm, every day I'm angry. Every single day. But this doctrine is what helps to keep us sane and keep us going. This is our engine and our oil and fuel to keep our, our system running, to keep going, so we don't lose our damn mind. This is absolutely ridiculous. Kam Yasharala, which means rise, Israel rise. And Barakatham, bless you all. See you on the next lesson, Lord willing. Shalom. <clears throat>